Praise God. I want to talk to you this morning from uh, the book of Corinthians, chapter number, number 10, a word that's a word that's been stirring in my heart, and I, I partially shared it before, but I, I, it, it, won't, it won't leave me. And so I'm trying to get rid of a word that's burning on the inside. And I want to talk about hindrances. Amen. Hindrances that, that prevents us from coming into our promises. Talk about hindrances. H-I-N-D-E-R-A-N-C-S. Hindrances that prevents us from coming into our promises. Amen. Um, when you talk about a hindrance, the Bible uses different words, but they all mean the same thing. The Bible says that don't, don't be a stumbling block for a brother. Amen. That, that means a hindrance. Amen. Uh, sometimes, amen, all of y'all have worked or do work at one time or another, but how many of y'all ever experienced not getting a full paycheck? Have it, have it, have it, yeah, yeah, experience again. All right. Can I ask you, if you don't mind sharing, why didn't you get a full paycheck? Okay, sick out a couple of days, amen? Uh, so you didn't get a full paycheck, okay? You, you didn't lose your job. You still had your job, but you didn't get the full paycheck. You got a check, but not the full paycheck. Come on, y'all. Amen? Hindrances. You run into them in every facet of your life. Everywhere you go, you run into hindrances. You know, uh, sometimes children does not get the kind of grades that they want to get because of hindrances. Amen? Sometimes they fail to hang the homework. Wasn't that they was out of school. They, they just failed to do the assignment. Amen? They, they failed to live up to their potential, what was expected of them. So when the grace was handed out, amen, they, they did not get what they expected. Amen. Praise God. And, and, and so I want to talk about hindrances this morning because we continually talk about that God is a God of promise and that he is. Amen. God is a God of promise. And all that we get, y'all, we get by way of a promise. Amen. All that comes to us, come to us, amen, because of a promise. Hallelujah. People say, well, you got the, you got the, let it go. You got to speak it. Well, you can only speak it if it's based on promise. If there's no promise, then you're just whistling in the air. Amen. But our life, y'all, is characterized by promises. Oh, praise God. The thing about a promise, amen, is that many times the promise does not get fulfilled when you want to be fulfilled. But it's still there. Hallelujah. Amen. Uh, a promise is, you know, you know, when people get engaged, engagement is a promise. Amen. That I'm going to marry you. A a amen. Praise God. Sometimes the promises get delayed. Amen. For one reason or another. Amen. They get delayed. Amen. And there are other promises. Amen. Uh, they get rescinded. Uh-huh. Because they find out that you were, you weren't the right one for me. And so I, I need my ring back because I need to give it to somebody else. Come on, come on, y'all. Hallelujah. Amen. And, and so, so you run into stuff in life, but hold on. Amen. Uh, uh, all the promises of God, the Bible say, are yea and amen. And so if all the promises of God are yea and amen, the question then that uh, we as believers ask ourselves then, why don't I come in? Why am I not experiencing all the promises of God? And I believe that the, the reason is hindrances. Amen. And the hindrances comes not because that God isn't able. Oh, praise God. Amen. But I believe the hindrances is on our part. 
Oh, praise God. Amen. See, y'all, when you're, a lot of times, you know, we go to the grocery store and shopping, amen, and a lot of times we don't get what we want. Amen. We don't get what we want because many times the grocery don't have what they said that they had. Amen. And, and, so you, you, and so you get a little thing called a rain check. Amen. So when you do get that, I'll be back. Hallelujah. I'll be back. I was, uh, we were in Prime Shopper, I don't know, a few months ago, and I wanted some Diet Dr. Pepper. It was on sale for a dollar, dollar ninety nine for a six pack. A bowl, the bowls, the, I don't know what size, 20 ounce bowls. Yeah, 20 ounce bowls. It was a good deal. But I go on the shelf, there's none there. So get a rain check. I come back to do the rain check, they still ain't got none. Amen. So the rain check ran out. You, you know, because the rain check is only good for a certain number of days. And so the rain check ran out. So since Dave went to them, said, listen, every time we come to get it, you ain't got it. So we need uh, to renew the rain check, and you need to do, do something with this rain check. Oh, well, praise God. So, you know, so they ended up writing a rain check. Amen. A uh, uh, six time, because you were only supposed to get one, so they gave uh, uh, for a uh, six offers, six six offers, and even with the six, they still didn't have six. But I but I got what they had. Hallelujah. Amen. But I thank God. God is not like that. God is true for His promises. Amen. And God deals with us differently, y'all than the normal uh, lifestyle of things, than the way things normally run. God deals with us totally different. Amen, totally different. And so I want to encourage you today that you don't be discouraged by what you see. Because many times what you see will make you to come to the, a wrong conclusion. Oh, praise God. Amen. But I want you to let you know, Solomon said it this way, all that, all that is has been, all that has been will be. And he concluded there's nothing new under the sun. Uh -huh. In other words, whatever you're facing or going through, it has been and it's going to be, become again. Hallelujah. Amen. But Solomon spoke from the eyes of a natural man. Mm -hmm. uh, but there's one wiser than Solomon here. Yes, sir. His name is Jesus Christ. Amen. And so he came, y'all, amen, uh, to fulfill the promises, amen, of the word of God. And so uh, if he fulfilled it, that, that, that gives us testimony of what God says is true. Praise God. Now, how do we deal today in our day, you know, in the things that we go through? Amen. Well, that's what I want to talk about. Amen. And, and because sometimes, y'all, you can get frustrating, uh, frustrating waiting on the promises of God like Abraham. Mm -hmm. God promised Abraham that he would make a nation out of his own uh, loins and so forth. Amen. Praise God. Amen. But Abraham was waiting for some years and nothing happened. Y'all know the story. Nothing happened. Amen. And his wife convinced him, and you, you got to be careful of listening to people. Amen. They mean well, but a lot of times they're out of the will of God, and they will draw you out of the promises of God. It doesn't mean that they're unsafe. It means, y'all, that in times of stress, you've got to learn how to hold on to God like you never did before. Praise God. Amen. And so when, when she gave him another woman to have a child by, amen, and Abraham wanted to bless him, and, and God said, oh, no, I, I, I ain't changed the promise. You know, the promise is still valid. Yeah, I'm going to bless him because he came from your womb, but the promise, I said, that I was going to bless the, 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 the world through you. Praise God. Amen. Amen. And, and, and so God said, I, 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 I ain't changed. 
And you got to be careful, y'all, amen, that sometimes because you see other stuff, amen, that you think God changed. No, he didn't change. And the other thing that will, will, uh, that, that will bother you is when you see other people come along and it seems like they get their stuff and you've been waiting a long time. Let's look at the word of God because the word of God, amen, speaks to us. Amen. It, it really does. The word of God speaks to us. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. I want to start at verse 1. I, it's only, I'm only going to deal with probably 10 verses here. Praise God. Amen. But in this, I want to give you uh, five different areas, hallelujah, that can be hindrances. Amen. Because again, Whatever is going on now has already happened. Okay? A New Living Translation, I think I'd like to deal with today. If y'all can, if y'all don't mind uh, putting it, if y'all can put it on the screen, I don't know whether you can. If y'all got your Bible, then y'all get your Bibles. Amen? Uh, New Living Translation, 1 Corinthians chapter number 10. Amen? Verse number 1. It says, I don't want you to forget they're brothers and sisters. Now, I want you to understand the, 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 the topic, amen, and who would be addressed, see? There, there are some things that's addressed that you can use direct application of. There are other things, it's good truths that you can receive, amen, they're not directly applicable to you. He says, I, I don't want you to be ignorant, uh, Paul said, I don't you want you to forget, dear brothers and sisters, about our ancestors in the wilderness long ago. About our ancestors, where it was, they were in the wilderness. How long? A long time ago. Oh, praise God. It says all of them, and I want you to get that, all of them were guided by a cloud that moved ahead of them, and all of them walked through the sea on dry ground. Amen? So what was it that, that led them? What Paul is trying to let them know that they were led and guided by the Spirit. Come on, y'all. Hallelujah. See, y'all need to understand something. Because you're a spirit walker, amen, it does not mean that everything is going to be working out for you expeditiously. Uh -huh. But you've got to learn how to wait, amen, uh, I say on the Lord and be a good courage. My God, hallelujah. I'm going to preach to myself. Amen. See, see, a lot of times we want to gain a hurry. Amen. And because things doesn't happen in our timely manner, amen, well, many times we get discouraged and we come up with our own uh, uh, way of dealing with stuff. So, so Paul is reminding them of a fact that they should know because he's dealing with a present day group of believers, but he refers back to another group of the believers, amen? He said that they were all, they, 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 they were guided by the cloud and they were, uh, that moved ahead of them. And, and so what he's saying to us, y'all, amen, the thing that should be guiding you is, uh, amen, it's the cloud. You say, well, I didn't see it. No, it's not there anymore. It's here. God changed the position of the cloud, amen, so you don't see it physically, amen. You've got to see it spiritually. Come on, y'all, amen. And so God put the cloud within you. It's called the unction of the Holy Spirit. That's the cloud. Hey, see, see, people get upset. I hope I can see the cloud. Well, you got it. Is in you. Hallelujah. Amen. The guidance of God is in you. Praise God. He says, and all of them walked through the sea on dry land. They were all, amen, they, 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 oh God. They walked through. They, they didn't stay. They walked through. Now, I want you to understand it's a sea. A sea is a whole lot of water. Amen. It's more than you can swim through. It's more than you can drink. Come on, y'all. But here's a, here's a condition, y'all. Amen. Because they followed, oh God, Lord, thank you. Because they followed the Spirit, they were able to do something, y'all, that normally you can't do. They went through the sea. How did they go through it? The, Paul said they walked through it, the sea on dry ground, which is really... Amen. It's an oxymoron because of the uh, ground.
ground don't represent sea, Sister Julia. Water represents sea. Amen. But when, oh God, amen. But God can move the sea. Hallelujah. Because it's designated to be the sea. Oh God, Lord Jesus, I thank you. Amen. Because there's one, oh God, because God can move the water, but it's still the sea because that's what God called. Mm, God, hallelujah. Amen. There's a word there for somebody. Oh, Jesus, amen. Whatever God called it, it might not be there now, but it's still what God called it. Yeah, you're shitting it to you. Oh, God. Hallelujah. Oh, praise God. See, things cannot change on its own. See, because I read the Bible. See, God put... God put uh, boundaries for the sea and the ocean. He said, you can come this far and no farther. Amen. That's why we, uh, we never have the ocean and seas overflowing. <laughs> because God put a stop to them. Oh, praise God. That you can only come this far and you can't come no farther than this. Praise God. Num verse number two. It says, in the cloud and in the sea, all of them were baptized as follows of Moses. Now the qualifications were, that Paul is trying to get us to understand, it, this don't apply to everybody. It applies to these ancestors of theirs uh, because of their relationship with God. Oh, praise God. Amen. And, the, and, and to be baptized means to be put into. Amen. And so they were baptized as followers of Moses as you've been baptized as a follower of Jesus. Amen. amen. Praise God. You're baptized, I mean, you were put into, amen, and they came under, amen, the instruction of Moses. Listen to verse 3. Verse 3 says, all of them ate the same spiritual food. All of them. Come on, y'all. All of them. All, all, all of them. Y'all need to understand something. Amen. Once you are in God and God is in you, amen. Ella, Steve, you ain't eating nothing different than I'm eating. Ella knows God didn't give you, amen, a gourmet dish and didn't give it to me. Y'all need to understand something, amen. Once you're a believer and follow Christ, amen, the same food is available to all of us. Oh, praise God. Amen. And you need to be able to discern, amen, the spiritual food that you're eating. Oh, praise God. See, when you're unable to discern what you're eating, y'all, oh, praise God. See, it will affect your whole metabolism. Amen. And that's where people get off. Mm. L listen to the Bible. They, they, all of them, not some of them. So, so when we speak the word, y'all, and y'all won't make allowances for this one over that one, the Bible said all of them ate the same spiritual food. So they all should have been equally fat. And all of them, the word A-L-L, all, it means inclusive, nobody left out. Drank the same spiritual water. For they drank from the spiritual rock that traveled with them. And that rock was Christ. Oh, God. See, God don't, we used to sing a song, say, God never sent a soldier to battle alone. Amen. And I tell you something else about God. Amen. Whenever God sends you battle, amen, he always sends you water. Ah, uh, come on, y'all. Amen. Because, see, water represents life. Come on, y'all. Amen. And he know it's going to get hard on a journey, and you need to keep alive. And God don't send you to kill you. Amen. But he sends you, y'all, because he expects you to come back. Uh-huh. And so God don't want you to have to trust him where you are. Amen. To stay alive. He sends it with you. Oh, God, I thank you. Hallelujah. See, a lot of times people is looking for stuff to keep them alive in, in, instead of understanding, amen, when God called you, God gave you what you need to survive the journey. Uh, how many of y'all know we are on a journey? Oh, come on, y'all. Amen. How many of y'all know we go through stuff? Hallelujah. Amen. And God don't expect us to live, amen, from the stuff we're going through. Um, come on, y'all. Hey, but what God does, God gives us, amen, the things that we need to, to 
make us true. Yee, hallelujah. And so all oh, God David talked. He said, that's why David was able to say, although I walk through the valley of shadow death, he says, I fear no evil, for thou art with me. And y'all, please don't forget, whatever you're going through, you got to know who's with you. Oh, praise God. You got to know who's with you. Because God don't expect you to live, live off of what you're going through. Oh, I'm going to say that again. God don't expect you to live off what you're going through. Before you got into it, you were already sufficiently equipped to go through it. You have all you need. Hallelujah. You have all you need. Oh, praise God. Number four, verse number five. Now, listen. So, so they got they got guidance. They got rec, they got guidance. They got the the necessary uh, substance that they need. Listen. They also know where they were called to. So they were going someplace. They have the stuff that they need to sustain them till they get there, and they got their GPS is working. The GPS is working. They're, they're not like our stuff that depends on satellite. Because there are times that y'all can get our position of a satellite. Uh-huh. And, and, and talk to me, Sister Rita. And then you're looking for your GPS. I know I put it in for you to come, but I, I ain't getting uh, I ain't got Wi-Fi here. So because I ain't got Wi-Fi, I can't get my, my GPS ain't working. So right now, it cut off. It don't know I'm here. I, it brought, I don't know where to go. See, y'all, listen. God is not like that. See, for that GPS, you need Wi-Fi. It's got to get a signal. Come on, y'all. Hallelujah. Oh, praise God. That's a lesson for somebody because y'all so used to, amen, uh, being dependent on your GPS. Amen. There are places you can go where you can't get a signal. Mm -hmm. I know you thought you knew where you was going and GPS said turn right and then all of a sudden it, it dies on you. So where do you go now? You go right, left, you turn around. What do you do? So before you begin the journey, you need to have some sense of direction of where you're going. In case GPS falls out, I still know that I need to take Route 1. <clears throat> now, what he said in verse 5, after all of this equipment God gave them, verse 5 is very, uh, is, is very prophetic. He said, yeah, yeah. Yeah, they, they was equipped. They had the Holy Spirit. They had the things they needed to make it. Yet, now this is this God. Yet, God was not pleased with most of them. Not some of them, but most of them. Oh, praise God. Amen. And, and that says something. Amen. That speaks to my spirit, y'all. Hallelujah. Amen. In, 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 the, in the whole body, amen, God says, hey, yo, most of y'all is stinking. He said, well, I'm pleased with most of them. And I look at what he said. To show he wasn't displeased, it says, and their bodies were scattered in the wilderness. What did God do? God killed them. And that, that y'all need to understand, amen, God is not physically killing today, mm -hmm. but there are still people dying. Mm -hmm. they're, they're, they're influenced. Uh -huh. Come on, y'all, their, their speciality. Come on, y'all, what they're able to uh, achieve. See, death means that I can no longer influence anything. Death means nobody don't listen to me. But the, 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 the Solomon said it this way. He said, there's no difference between, between a dead dog, amen, and a dead man. They're both dead. It, it's a lack of communication happens when you're dead. 
You need to understand that there are people, amen, although God is a day is still around, you see them physically alive, but they're dead. Come on, y'all. Amen. Because God does, y'all go shed day. Amen. Because they can no longer communicate. Their effectiveness is gone. Dead. They preaching, but they're dead. They singing, but they're dead. They come into church, but they're dead. Come on, y'all. You listen. When you have no longer have any influence, you're dead. Now, this is what God said. God said, I wasn't pleased. And he showed his displeasure by their bodies being scattered in the wilderness. Their bodies, their physical bodies. Verse 6. It says, these things happen. What? As a warning, as a warning to us. A what, Lord? A warning. Well, what's a warning, y'all? A warning happens, you, you know, when you go to close your car door, amen, and you can't, y'all, you know, you got your lock and the door won't lock, the car won't lock, amen, it's warning you, something is wrong. Amen, your, 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 your door my car, the door won't lock. It's, it, 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 I can't lock it if a door isn't closed. I, I, I can't lock it if the keys is left in the ignition. Come on, y'all. It, it warns me. Come on, y'all. And then we got these other little things that goes off warning. If somebody tried to get into your car, you know, the horn goes off. It warns you. Amen. A, a warning, y'all. Oh, praise God. A, a warning you is a condition that's not good for your situation. So these things are not good for your situation. Praise God. It says warning to us. They're warning to us so that we should not, and here's the first thing, that we should not crave evil things as they did. We should not crave. To crave evil things as they did. In the message Bible, it says, we should, not, we should not want things our way. Oh, come, come on, y'all. I'm talking about hindrances, amen, that stopping you from getting your promises. Number one, want things our way. That's one. You need to write that one down. Oh, praise God. Want things our own way. Amen. Crave evil things. Amen. Want things our own way. Now, if that's you, that might be a possibility why you're not entering into the promises of God. Amen. And God got record of the people that did that because they wanted things their own way. Number two, uh, verse seven. Or worship idols as some of them did. As the scripture said, the people celebrate with feasting and drinking, and they indulge in pagan revelry. So, so what they did, y'all, was that after they, they they had Aaron make them a calf because they wasn't satisfied because they hadn't heard from Moses, because Moses was spending time with God. You know, and after uh, the, the calf, uh, uh, they, they worship, amen, uh, and, and, and indulge in sacrificing the calf. Uh, then the Bible says in the book of Exodus chapter 32, they indulge in, in immoral activities. They got into some stuff, Amen. That's uh, New Living said they celebrate with feasting and drinking, and indulging pagan reverie. Rever reverie. Amen. Uh, in other words, y'all, um, they, 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 they turn their religious, amen, into, into a circus. And, and, and y'all, we can't afford to turn our worship, our religion into a circus. In other words, what, what people is doing today, they're, they're attaching all of these things 
around their religion and they are still saying they're worshiping God when in actual fact they're not worshiping God. They have replaced their religion with a true worship of God. The Bible, God has been stirring my spirit on uh, one of the things that w in this area that we're dealing with in, our, in the culture today is called idolatry. We've got so many idols before God. We've got idols before God. Our time becomes an idol. Our family becomes an idol. Our job becomes an idol. Or oh, our rest becomes an idol. There's so many things the Lord just enlivened my spirit of the number of things that the people today have become idols. It's not a cab, amen, that's this a goal, but it's a job. It's, 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 it's money, it's clothing. It's families. And they and, and, and then today they made them an idol. It's their rest. They made them an idol because the, what God showed me was that they are, they are above me. And he said, I told you, thou shalt have no other God above me. And what people are doing, they're putting above God. So they have no time for God. Their, their religion, <laughs> they, oh God, help us. You know, and they, they put stuff out there. Praise God. So idolatry, idolatry, y'all, idolatry. Amen. It, it's the next and word. It's idolatry. What have you put before God? What is it? What, what, what is it? Maybe you're not aware of what you're worshiping. Verse number eight. It says, and we must not engage in sexual immorality as some of did, them did, causing 23,000 of them to die in one day. See, because of their sexual immorality, God killed 23,000 one day. I don't know what they were doing. The Bible just called it sexual immorality. In one day. I want y'all to understand, these were, these were not pagans. These were his people. And God killed them. His people. I know y'all want to talk about the world. No, I want to talk about the church. God killed them because they were sexual, sexually promiscuous. They did some stuff and they paid for it because in one day God tw killed 23,000 of them. Sexual immorality. And I'm not talking about sexual immorality in the world. That's very well publicized. I'm talking about sexual immorality in the church. Because of sexual deals, they just took down the, uh, earlier this, this month, they took down the head of the, uh, the Baptist head of their leader of the, their seminary. And they, they were going to keep him on and pay his retirement. But after the other stuff came on, they completely took him down with no retirement. I don't know what was the other stuff come up, but so of uh, women of what he done, and, and a lot of people have come up under him. In the church, I'm not talking. See, because see, a lot of times, what what we what the people want to do. It's talk about the world. What God has in line my spirit, talk about the church. Because, see, y'all, the problem of the world is the church. The problem of the world is not the world. The problem with the world is the church. Mm -hmm. and, and, that, and that's why God said, if my people. He enacts the world. He said, if my people. 
He said, my people. And I, and I, I, I shared with, the, with elders and different ones I've been shared with that uh, that scripture has gave me problem in Chronicles 7 and 14 because God said, if my people, which are called by my name, if they will humble themselves and pray, seek my face and turn from their wicked way. Oh, wait a minute, God. They're your people. And you said they got wicked ways. And I had a, I'm telling y'all, I, years I had a problem with that. I said, God, but they're your people. But God said they got wicked ways. But I no longer struggle with that. I, I see it now. I couldn't see it before. But now I see, I see people of God that's got wicked ways. And they God's people that they're wicked. And except for the grace of God, they will go, they're in, they will end up in hell. God giving them a chance right now. They are wicked. Oh yeah, they fall in the cloud, but they're wicked. I understand they follow you, but they're wicked. I know it's tough for you to comprehend. Amen. That uh, because you thought all the wicked people were in the world. No, there are wicked people in the church. And God said, I need them to turn. I, I'm talking to them about themselves. I, need, I know they're testifying, but God said they're wicked. I know they're in position, but God said they're wicked. So these things here, y'all, was in his people. They were with his people. You, you, you understand his people his people were messed up number four verse nine now should we put Christ to the test as some of them did and then died from snake bites what were they doing uh they were trying. They were doing what a lot of our uh, d this this in our. You, you got to be careful of what you hear and so forth, because a lot of times people is trying to say, "Well, God said this and God doing this," and it ain't God, because they're trying to get God. They're they're manipulating God to work things according to the way that they said. Come on, y'all. God works, but He works according to His word. Come on, y'all. Hallelujah. Amen. God don't work according to my word. He works according to his word. And so this is manipulation that goes on, amen, in the church. And what the God did, some of them, he killed, some of them died from snake bites. Mm-hmm, snake bite. You know, uh, it, it was an epidemic that happened, and God caused it. It was an epidemic, and God called. Y'all know what an epidemic is? It was an epidemic, and God caused it. That's how we was at a meeting, I don't know, a few weeks ago with, uh, with the, the, the folks, and I, I, I got upset, I, I, and I have to admit, I'm, I, I'm getting saved every day. There are some things that, that, that hits me wrong, and I have to ask the Lord, Lord, you got to help me. But this woman was talking about, she said, don't you know, she was talking about the, because uh, we was talking about situations, and she said, don't you know that we have a, we, we, we uh, this, this open north, it's an epidemic. And I, 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 I mean, I had, I says, I, what, I says, and I, I didn't say she was, I included her. I said, what, are we so stupid now? Is this the first epidemic we ever had? And all of a sudden, we don't know how to deal with it? I felt like saying, you lying to me. Whatever epidemic we ever had, we always, on some people, found out how to deal with it. Whether it was the blue bonnet plague, uh, uh, plague or whether it was the Zika virus, or whatever it was, whatever epidemic that happened y'all we have learned how to deal with but now we got open Lord and all of a sudden we 
got all kinds of money and we don't know how to deal with it. Y'all lying to me. God caused this one. But whatever God causes, God always gives the remedy. Come on, y'all. God gave the remedy. Amen. Because, uh, because of what they did. Amen. And God caused the, 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 the people to start dying from snake by. But then God told Moses, listen, they tell you what to do. And, you know, hammer a snake, you know, on bread. Put it on a pole and hang it up. They ain't got to come to church. They ain't got to give no money. As a matter of fact, they ain't got to move from where they are. There's only one requirement. They just got to lift up their eyes. They ain't got to hold a hand up. They just got to lift up their eyes. If they lift up their eyes and they look at the brass serpent on the pole, they will live. But some of them were so stubborn. God's people. So stubborn. They would not lift up their eye. And so many of them died. And they died because of stubbornness. The medical profession took the symbol. And they use it now. For healing. And for a symbol of medicine. The brass serpent on a pole. So we got to stop trying to get Christ to serve us instead of serving him. Stop trying to get God to do what you want him to do instead of you do what God has said to do. Lord, if you do this, I'll serve you. When you tell them that, please let me know so I can back up. I don't want the lightning bolt to hit me either. God, this and this. If you do this, God, I, I, I say, yeah, God ain't no toy that you play with. Amen. God already said if, if, in, in the book of Isaiah chapter 1, if, 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 if you do good, if you're obedient, he said you'll eat the good of the land. If you're not eating the good of the land, it means that you're rebellious. It means that you're not ob obedient to me. He said, if you're willing, let me quote it right, if you're willing and obedient. There's some people, oh, uh, you, you know, they ain't willing. And they ain't obedient. They, they're neither one. All right. That's four. Number five. Verse 10. And don't grumble. Don't grumble. Oh, this one here hit, hit a whole lot of folks. And don't grumble as some of them did and then were destroyed by the angel of death. The angel of death came through and destroyed them. For what? Because of their grumble, because of their mumber, because of their, can I give you a, a, a modern word for it? Discontent. They're discontent. It's too hot. It's too cold. It's too much light. It's not enough light. Service is too long. Service is too short. I don't like the singing. I don't like the preaching. They grumble. They mumble. They complain. They were discontent. Discontent. You know what my word to people? And it's to y'all. If you're discontent, it's best for you to leave. Other than that, you bring the judgment of God on you. Discontent. Discontent. God destroyed them for what? Discontent. I think that's fine. They will stop you. Any one of them, or all of them, will stop you from 
getting into the promises that God promised. God got promises for us. We move forward according to the promises of God. Amen. Abraham was not weak, the Bible says in Hebrew, concerning the promises of God, but was strong in faith. God got promises. Amen. God has spoken. Amen. God is bringing us someplace. Amen. But you, you start murmuring and come discontent. Well, I, you know, I don't agree with the pastor there. That's fine, honey. You, you, you better ask God to help you. It's one thing, Ella, Steve, not to agree. The problem comes in when your discontent is revealed when you talk to Ella Nobles. Verse number 11. I'm almost finished. It says, these things happen to them as examples for us. And they were written down to warn us who live at the end of the age. They were warnings for us. They were examples. God used them to show you. Don't grumble. Come on, y'all. D- don't try to manipulate God. Don't get involved in sexual immorality. Watch idolatry. Amen. And watch your lust and craving after things that's not of God. And the Lord, I did it in another way. But all of these things, and I, 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 a few weeks ago, I taught this in Syracuse. And so I had my board, and so I was able to write down as I taught. When I finished it, the Lord helped me see what I had written. All of these things, y'all, Nobody from the outside would know that you're guilty of them. Nobody. All of them, I look back at and I'm saying, God, thank you for revelation. They are all sins of the heart. So you can do these things. I won't know. Nobody else will know. But it will stop you from moving into the promises of God. And the reason why God judged him because Moses didn't see him. They were things of the heart. I can't see your heart. So I can't judge things of your heart. God can. Because only God sees your heart. And God said that the heart is desperately wicked. Who can know it? But God said, I, the Lord, I try the heart. They are heart things. And in a physical sense, God showed what happened to them, you know, because they were following God in a physical way. The cloud was physical. Everything they did was physical. God deals with us spiritually. The things for, for our example that we shouldn't do this stuff. If you're guilty of this stuff, you need to repent today. And you need to ask God, God, help me. Help me to shut. Job said it this way. When Job was murmuring about God, Job said, when God confronted Job, Job said, I put shut to my mouth. He said, I put shut. To my mouth. May I warn you, some of y'all need to put shut to your mouth. And you need to plead to God. Lord, help me. That's my prayer. I I told y'all that before. My my number one prayer that I pray, God, help me, God. I need your help, God. Because to whom much is given, much is required. 
And I understand you. I understand you more than I ever did. I know about your holiness. I know about your love. I know about your righteousness. I know what you've done for me. I understand it more clearly than I ever did. So I said, God, help me. Help me not to not to have a spirit of discontent. Help me, God, not to lust and crave. But help me not to manipulate you. But to trust you, God. Help me not to get involved in sexual immorality. You know that's plague in the church today. If you don't know it, I'll tell you. It's plague in the church today. Sexual immorality. Porn, y'all, is a billion, billion dollar business. And it's flooding, affecting the church. Not only men, but also women. Pornography. Why? You know, if you ain't careful, you turn your, you turn your computer, it'll show up. You got to watch your phone, it'll show up. Some of you can't stop from showing up, but what you can do, you stop yourself from looking at it. So the Bible says, the, the, in the Bible it says, you, you need to make a covenant with your eyes. People don't talk about it. They don't talk about these things. They, they, they don't talk about the racism among the cultures. Not outside the culture, among the cultures. I don't know about this. God, what's our problem? It's not out there, it's in here. You know who the number one enemy that we face every day? You walk with him. Come on, y'all. You walk with him every day. If you don't see your enemy, yourself as an enemy, you got trouble. Because all that you think, all that you process is out of you. It's about you. Other people just reveals you. That's why Jesus said, Satan, the enemy coming, but there's nothing in me. And he can't pull nothing. There ain't nothing, nothing there. He, he ain't got nothing to pull from. He, he, you know, and I, I work every day to try to get stuff out of me. Mm -hmm. I thank God for grace. I thank God for mercy. Come on, y'all. I, 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 listen, I know there's junk in me. All of it ain't out. And there's junk in you. Don't, don't act like you're perfected. You have not been. There's still mess in you. There's God working to get the stuff out. You said, the Bible said, where come wars and, 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 and that kind of stuff? And fight it. The Bible said it comes from your own members. So before a person ever war with you, they're warring with themselves. And they can't contain it no more. So it's spreading out. It's like a wildfire. It gets out of control. But the Lord wants us to be in control. Because God wants to come in the promise that he has given to us. But these are hindrances. How bad, let me, let me, how bad did they hinder, right? God said to them, because they're mama, he says, I, I, I'm, I'm going to put a, a limit. Anybody that's 20 and over, uh-huh, they, they, they so wicked, I ain't going to let them come into the promise. God said, because of their mummery, because of their discontent, because of them tempting me, uh, because of them f falling out of God, because of them craving stuff for them. He said, I'm going to kill them all here. And he did. Only two. Only two came out from that group. That was Caleb and Joshua. 
They're the only two that came out. Everybody has died, including Moses. Moses didn't make it either. He dealt with wicked people. <laughs> Y'all got to understand that. I'm praying God save me. No, I want to die with the people. I'm sorry. I, I, really, I want God, I want to make it out. But Moses got so upset with Moses became wicked too because he, because he called some names. And what he did, he failed to honor God as a leader. Amen. When you fail to honor God, there's consequences. No, he didn't, he didn't have the care. No, he failed to honor God because he got tired of their murmuring. He got tired of their belly aching. He got tired of them complaining. He got tired. And flesh took over. So they said, we, we want some water. We ain't got no more water. Moses went to God again. God, they, again, I gave them water before. Now they, they want water again. But everything God does, y'all, God trying to bring stuff out of us. So God said, speak to the rock. Moses was so upset. I understand that. Moses didn't speak to the rock. Moses, number one, I told you what the word said. Everybody is judged by the word. The Bible said, if you're willing and obedient. Moses was disobedient. He didn't speak to the rock. He disobeyed God. You say, that's a small thing. And, and, and he struck the rock, number one. Number two is what he called God's people. He struck the rock and he told, he said, come up and drink, you rebels. Oh, he was upset. You know, and because he struck the rock, rock water came out. Water did come out. They did drink. Amen. Amen. But then, go, yeah, if you read, at the end, God took him up on the mountain for the last time. They didn't see him no more after that. Now, the one part of the most test one I take, the other part I ain't taking. I, you know, he, he took him up on the mountain, right? And, and he showed him what he could have had. Come on, y'all. I don't want to see what I could have had. Now, I want to go into it. The promises of God. He said, but why did Moses wasn't able to go in? Moses wasn't able to go in because God said to him, you failed to honor me in the eyes of the people. That's what's his sin. He failed to honor God. You said honor, yeah. He didn't honor God. With the what? He didn't honor God. And because he failed to honor God, God said, you can see it, but you ain't going there. And that's when Moses, that's the scripture, that's when Moses said to God, he said, listen, Lord, I'm 120 years old. I still got my right mind. Still got pep in my step. God said, I don't care. You're going to die here. And the Bible said, God killed him. Moses died. He didn't die from old age. Yeah, or I'm preaching to somebody Moses died because God said it's over. Come on, y'all. Amen. And, the, and, and I believe the angels, uh, God buried him, okay? The angels buried Moses. They're on the mountain. It's a hidden, it's hidden where God, where God buried. Because God wanted to cut his influence. Because he, what they did with the serpent lay on, the serpent became, although it healed him, became another idol in other generations. They begin to worship him. The thing that saved them, you can, you can become an outer. You can start worshiping. So God killed him and buried him. Mm -hmm. Because the Bible talks about Satan discussing with God about the burial of Moses' body. I don't know what he was going to do with it, but God made sure he didn't know where it was. God, God made sure of that. So Moses seen it, but he wasn't able to enjoy it. Amen. And the Bible says, these were for our example. In other words, y'all, don't live your life and fail to receive the promises of God. 
because of these issues, these five issues, either one will stop you from coming into the promises of God. So you need to check yourself and make sure it's for you I live and you alone, God, that I live. I, I'm, I'm not going to manipulate God. No, I, we live by faith. What God said. You know, what did God say? And that's what you got to keep reminding yourself. What did God say? Amen. And stop murmuring. Don't, don't start murmuring. Start the praying. Whatever you're going through, understand, it had to, when you love God, I, 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 you know, my, my scripture is Romans 8 and 28, you know, that if you love God, if you, and you got to ask yourself, you know, that all things work together for those who love God, who are called according to his purpose. And so you got to ask yourself the question. Number one, do I love God? Am I called? If I'm called, if I love God, then you need to know these things then, they're working for my purpose. As a matter of fact, all things work together for the good for those who love God, who are called according to his prayer.